1925 was a really uh, momentous year, a watershed year for the Vauxhall Motor Company because that was the year that General Motors of the United States bought Vauxhall. I'm not sure they knew what they were buying, but certainly General Motors had this impression that they wanted to get a foothold into Europe and at the time Vauxhall was struggling and the two came together. And I think probably just as well because in the recession of the 30s, I guess it's doubtful that Vauxhall could have survived making just purely luxury cars. Now, of course, General Motors had aspirations to uh, build cars literally for everyone. And the first manifestation of that was in 1931 when a brand new small Vauxhall came out, the Vauxhall Cadet, and that was sensational. Here was a, a hitherto luxury car manufacturer now making cars that literally everyone could afford. Now, by the time we arrive at the 10-4, Vauxhall was a mass producer of motor cars and a very serious competitor in the United Kingdom market. If you look at the 10-4, it's got a number of very novel features. For a start, it's the first car in the United Kingdom to have a unitary construction body, or what we might call nowadays a, a monocoque. Uh, it's also got an overhead valve engine. It's got independent front suspension. It's got hydraulic brakes, and it's the first production car to offer metallic paint. <laughs> On the roads of every motoring country in the world and now run the two new models of the famous Vauxhall Company, the two and a quarter litre Velox and its younger brother, the one and a half litre Wyvern. Both embody all the latest features of the high class motor car. The independent suspension system is progressive, automatically meeting surface conditions. Obviously, there's loads of room for luggage. The trunk also accommodates the spare wheel. Note the press button fuel filler cap. The screen wipers, when switched off, automatically rest at the bottom of the screen, thus overcoming one of the minor annoyances of motoring. After the war, we started to make some cars, start with the L-Type, but principally the first car where I think people really go, wow, and look at some of our cars, is the Vauxhall Wyvern. came out in 1953, and it was the first car where not only did we have North American engineering, but plainly we had North American styling, and uh, my father had one, and I can remember being enormously proud of this car and polishing all the chrome, of which it has quite a lot. It, it was an amazing car. It drove very well. It was a beautiful family car, but it had that North American spark, and of course, in the 50s, and, and indeed in the 60s, the United States was where it was at with car design. This factory planned to build a car utterly new, yet worthy of a long history of fine engineering. Better than anything that had gone before, different from all the others. A car that would look ahead from 1958. But England can't provide all the testing grounds that modern car designers need. So they put their prototypes in an air freighter and headed them for the autobahns and rugged mountains of Europe. It's lucky these men are good drivers as well as good development engineers. See what I mean? This is the Vauxhall Cresta PA, 1958. It's the oldest known one in the world. When the public first bought these cars, I think they thought they were film stars themselves. Big bloody yanks and chewing gum, yang yang. I don't particularly like the yanks, but I like the cars. Lots of crown, like a jukebox on wheels. Fins sticking up at the back, Batman. But some of the real unusual things about the car was the curved glass. It's a proper American idea. And the early one like this, had three rear windows. Uh, belt your knee every time you open the door. That was good, you never forgot that. That was good, that was. Especially if you'd had a couple of pints of beer, it sort of sobered you up a bit, yeah, that was good, that one. Huh? And then, of course, the lovely big back seat, if you sort of picked up a girl, you was sort of all right there, you know, as well. Surely this is a great day for any family. The fine of the car, the sweet of the joy. And there are no sweeter lines in fine cars than this new Vauxhall Cresta shows. This is motoring in the modern shape, graced in the colors of tomorrow, set off in its distinctive style by bright work of chrome and stainless steel. This is the shape that is low, wide, and handsome. Vauxhall have marketed themselves very contradictorily. If you take the 50s, where they produce these ice cream and candy floss pink cars modelled on obviously GM in America. 
They then marketed them to the roast beef from Yorkshire pudding and the pipe smoking brigade. And unlike most other family cars, they included large numbers of people in their advertising. And the people are ultra respectable. So you get grey-haired businessmen, golf clubs, sitting inside bright pink Cadillac-styled PA Vauxhalls. You get respectable ladies with white gloves loading luggage and shopping into the back of early victors. And there is no reference to the exciting styling, no reference to the transcontinental elements of the style at all in the brochures. They were almost perhaps ashamed of their styling and trying to pretend that you could still be very traditionally British and buy these extravagant and exuberant cars. Here's finger light control. Here's boldness in the details that count for so much. Here's a safe car with the unequal vision of a panoramic screen. Easy to park with full width rear vision. Satisfying in its interior appointments, especially in my lady's critical esteem. Everybody loved these cars, but the rust, tin worm, what we call it, but rust, I suppose, uh, terrible. Especially the back wings used to nearly fall off, used to flap along the road. The, uh, the petrol filler, another thing, there's a little drain, water drain there, and they used to block up and then the water used to fill up the petrol tank. So, you know, when you was ready to go, you couldn't bloody go nowhere. You know, I like Vauxhalls because they're different. You know, everybody wring their heads off when you drive past. Nothing like it today on the road. The modern plastic rubbish don't appeal to me at all. This, this is the ultimate machine. <laughs>